culture swap. Swap, swap my culture. culture. I'll let you talk about this now. I've done a lot of talking. All right. So, Sick listeners, it. as you know, as we told you last week, we have read the graphic novel Preacher, Volume 1. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Sorry. I did a bad. I don't know why I bother even doing bits, Liam. Before we start Culture Swap... Can I just yeah. discuss our correspondence we've had? Because it, it because we we haven't really, we didn't really have correspondence to do with um you know the topic preacher. So um my, just, my, just to let you know, my finger is hovering over the hang up button. I'm not going to win. I just want to talk about the correspondence we did get. Okay, that's fine. Yeah. So um Tom Hogan tweeted us. He had some feedback. He was saying that he's a few episodes into Daredevil and he likes the Punisher character, and he said that Electra's introduction seemed weird. Uh, he also gave us a nice image that I noticed you haven't updated the header as yet. Yeah, the rustly popcorn. Yep. Yep, I have. Oh, okay. It hasn't updated on my phone for some reason. Um, also, what was that about? Because I still haven't listened to the last episode. We uh, spoke about rustly popcorn in cinemas again. Okay. Um, Tom Hogan also said, Oh, also, I enjoyed the bonus episode. I would definitely like more. I would imagine a Civil War one would work when it comes. So, I like well, the way Tom, your thinks. dreams have come true. Well, they will come true. This is the Civil War special. Uh, Welcome to Nerd on Nerd. Uh, Mark said on Twitter, I agree with Liam Underwood. VR's success will be dependent on pornography. There's my damn contribution. <laughs> is that because you were pestering him so much about contributing? Uh, well, yeah, it's because uh, if, if anyone listened to last week, they might know that I was upset that we aren't getting more fans... And I know it's presumptuous to think of you as fans, and you're clearly proving that by the fact that you don't contribute. But it was oh God, really. Your <laughs> opinion of the world is so misshapen. Yeah, um, that we don't get more listeners, let's say, um, contributing to the show with their feedback, their thoughts. I mean, we give you a good week and a half normally, or at least a week notice of what like we're going to be discussing next. I, I, you get angrier as you do them. No, I'm not. I'm not going to lie. No, you because like, at the beginning you were like, you know, I, whatever, it doesn't matter, and then you just slowly start talking, and you're like, yeah, I mean, we, d- you know, the listeners, I get, they're fans, but I guess they're not really fans because they're not really talking to us. And actually, we give them like two weeks to do it. And actually, this is rid- you just slowly get more and more yeah. pissed off as you do it. Well, you know, we give them a week to kind of get involved. They they choose not to, and you know, that's their prerogative. Because that we're not that we. <laughs> That's their prerogative, go- Jack. You had this rant last week. We don't need to go over it again. I'm not going over it again. I'm just saying, if you let me finish, I would like to say a very deep and heartfelt thank you to the two people that did bother to contribute. Now, I said last week, if we got three, I would shut up about it. We got two. So, that's all I'm saying. Hopefully, we'll hear from more of you next time. Culture swap. Swap my culture. What are we doing this time, Jack? What have we done? This time, Liam, yeah. is the question. Uh, this week, these last two weeks, we have read volume one of Preacher. Book one. All right, sorry, book one. Asshole. Uh, yeah, so just, you know, listeners, we'll do a little bit where we don't spoil it, I guess. Yeah, we can but do we a little spoiler-free spoil bit, and then we'll warn you when we're going to jump into the spoilers, shall we? All right, yeah, fair enough. All right, so tell me, Jack, who was involved in creating this fine piece of work? Garth Ennis. What was his job? He wrote the story along with... Uh, I can't remember the other guy's name. I haven't got it. I don't know why you're waiting. Steve Dillon? Yeah. Uh, Steve Dillon was also the lead artist. And yeah, he helped him write it as well. A little bit. He came he up said, with Preacher, yeah. If you read the uh, blurb intro. Yep. Yeah. Um, there's also a couple of colourists you might want to... What is it? Why is it every time we do a graphic novel you go through the... Like, when we do a film, you don't go through the credits. I go through the director, at least. Yeah, but you've done that. We've done the lead artist and the lead writer. Yeah, but it's because there's a fuck ton with movies. With this, there's literally right, like fine. six people. Tell, tell me who coloured Preacher. Matt Hollingsworth and Pamela Rambo, which is an you awesome two did name. Very, you two did very good jobs. Pamela Rambo is one heck of a name. That is a cool name. Uh, would you like to know who the, the did the lettering? Oh, of course. That was Clem Robbins. He did a good job. Would you like to know who did the cover art and original series covers? Yep. Glenn Fabry. He's a good artist. Good for him. He really is. And that that's kind of it, really. So... You know, like each each volume has its own credits, um, but we won't go into that. I mean, yeah, because we're only talking about the first one. But no, so not each volume, like each issue, sorry. Sorry, right, that that was the confusion. Right, got you. Yeah. Um, but yeah, we're only talking about the first one, so... Without spoiling it... Right. Okay, <laughs> we both went for it at the same time. Yeah. I was a little bit apprehensive, because it's quite a big read. Do you know what I mean? Like, compared to a normal trade paperback, volume one sort of thing, 
Yeah, it depends on what... Yeah, it's that, more like yeah. when you look at the Marvel, like, Siege and stuff, which was not volumes, it was just a storyline. Yeah. When you look at stuff like that, it's... I think that's bigger, but, like, yeah, yeah. I know what you mean. It's bigger than your average volume, volume one. one of this. Yeah, thing. exactly. That would normally be, I don't know, like, 70 pages. This is, like, I don't know, 200 and something, probably. Yeah. I'll find out. 300 plus. This is over oh. 300 pages, Jack. Over 350 pages. How did your little brain cope with it, Liam? Well, this is the thing. All I, those words. I was very apprehensive because I was like, I'm at like, neverwhere. That wasn't, that was probably half the size of this and I really struggled with that. Now, this, I read the first volume and I was like, look, there's a lot going on, but it's okay. Probably by, sorry, not volume issue, dickhead. By the second <laughs> issue, <laughs> by the second issue, I was hooked and I, I whizzed through it a lot faster than I was anticipating. Yeah. To the point where... And the other thing is, um, because it is so dense, I've already gone out and picked up book two from my friendly local neighbourhood comic book store because I want to keep momentum going. I think if I left too long between reading this one and book two, I would probably forget elements. And I would say there's a lot of referring back um, to previous issues. But yeah, there was a yeah. few times where something was mentioned and just out of my own curiosity, I want to go back and see if that tied up. Um, there was also once again no spoilers. We'll get into spoilers soon. But there's a character, and once you find out something about him, if you don't go, if you then go back and read some of his earlier dialogue, it has a new light, which is kind of interesting and really well thought out. Oh, okay, but we can get into that more when it gets to the spoilers. What did you think? Yeah. Spoiler free. I uh, yeah, I I really liked it as well. I think mine. I had I got really into the swing about halfway through. Okay. Like, I read it all in one day. Yeah. And I read issues, like, one and two, then I had a break. Yeah. Then, I don't know how many issues there were in it, but yeah, it felt like I sort of read one, two, had a break, three, four, and then after that... I think there was 12 in total. Let me just double check. Um, Yeah, 12 in total. Yeah, so maybe it was, like, one, two, three. I think I did the first three, had a break, the second three, had a break, and then I read the rest, just read straight through, because at that point I was like, oh my god, I need to find out all of this stuff. Yeah, well, I think what's what's quite interesting is you can break this down into three kind of major storylines that happen in this book. Yeah. Um, they're not quite like self-contained stories because there is an overarching story that is still unresolved by the end. Yeah, there's the overarching story arc. Yeah. And then there are three sub arcs. Yeah. Um, but without spoilers, would you recommend this? Yeah, 100%. If our listeners, yeah, if you guys haven't read it yet, go and get it. It's worth reading. I would agree. Definitely go get it. And you can tweet us your thanks later. Or not. Probably not, knowing you. Um, <laughs> spoiler time? Yeah. So, spoiler listeners. Spoiler time. Go, if you haven't read it, or if, you know... Wait, no, it would only be if you haven't read it. Yeah. If you haven't read it... And or you if you're to, just bored of listening to us at this point, you can stop. If you were looking for a good <laughs> bit to turn it off, you're like, I'm done. These two idiots don't shut up. This is that point. <laughs> Where it's polite to tell... You can pretend. Tweet us, say, I stopped listening, but I swear it's because I wanted to uh, go and read it. Yeah. And but yeah, no, I mean, now is the time to leave if you don't want it spoiled. I mean, I, I would say as well, like, this, this is the sort of book where a lot does happen, and I would say it, it doesn't matter too much if it's spoiled for you, but the no, sort of person doesn't... I am, I wouldn't want that to happen to me. Yeah, no, exactly. It's not... It, it, when we spoil it, it's not going to be like end of the world. I would still enjoy Preacher knowing... What happened in this, I think. Yeah, exactly. I think the, the fun is in the journey and the characterization more so than the plot points. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, let's start with Cassidy. Yeah. Now, there, there's... A, I mean, let's give a bit, bit of context. There's, there's three main characters. You've got the preacher, who is Jesse Custer. You've got an ex-girlfriend of his, who is Tulip. And you've got a guy that just sort of stumbles into their lives called Cassidy. Yes. Cassidy is probably my favourite character. Cassidy's great. And we find out that Cassidy is a vampire. Yeah, is he who you were saying going back and reading the other stuff yeah, he says? Uh, in, I, didn't, I didn't notice that. Really but early what? on, he says one of his reasons for wanting to leave Texas is he wants to change of diet. Oh, right. <laughs> that is pretty good. Yeah, and there's, I, I'm sure if, if I read it like more thoroughly, there'd be uh, that was just one thing I, I glimpsed while flicking through it, but I'm sure there'd yeah. be more because this is well thought out. Oh, yeah, no, I, I imagine that, yeah... If you went back and read it a second time, you'd pick up on a lot more stuff. Yeah, exactly. Um, my only concern with this with this book is in in the first issue, it really kind of just dumps a load on your plate really quickly, and there's a lot of information to take in. Well, it's it's the first the first two issues. Yeah, I think all take place like the actual time you're in is they are in a diner. Yeah, and they're talking about how they got there. Really. Yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah. Um, what I could have done without, at least to start with, I, I wouldn't have mind if they'd have kind of slipped it in more gradually, is the whole heaven stuff. Like okay. That to me just felt very abrupt, very sudden, and was just like, bam, heaven. Here's a load of special angels called Adelphi's or something. And I mean, that, that's standard. Oh, lawly. I mean, I don't know. Adelphi's and Seraph's are like... It's news to me, mate. It's because you're... What you're a nerd, but you're not like religious. A ner- no, it's not. No, it's nothing. To, do you want to know where I actually learned that shit from, Liam? Fucking Dungeons and Dragons, mate. Okay. Well, as, as we've discussed in a previous episode, I'm not very versed in that. No, no. Um, but yeah, that that kind of stuff to me, like, it just felt like it came a bit out of left field. Like, I mean, the the story it, it does get to the point where you buy into all that stuff happening, but where they introduced it, it was for me just a bit jarring. Yeah, I, I get that. I get that. It is very sudden. Yeah. It's literally... So they're sitting in the diner talking about how they got there, and you find out that Tulip and Cassidy... Tulip was doing some hitman work. Hit woman. Yep, fair point. Hit woman stuff. Uh, and then was... Messed it up. At the time, you think she just messed it up. Mm. And then she tried to escape from people trying to then kill her, and Cassidy just happened to be there... And offered to, like, give her a ride. Yeah, and what's interesting, you don't find out that she was being a hit woman until, like, way towards the end. When we talk about there being three kind of storylines, it's the third one that you actually find that out for sure. Yeah, but you know, you know what she's doing in the first issue. I didn't know she was being a hit woman. I thought it was, like, revenge on a boyfriend or something. I don't know. See, I thought it was pretty obvious that that's what she was doing. Maybe I'm just dumb. No, I don't think so. No, I'd agree with that. There you go. There's my good positive note for today. You aren't dumb, Liam. Thanks. Um, yeah, no, I get what you mean about it being very sudden. But yeah. I also, I don't know, I sort of enjoyed that. Because I went into this, like, all I knew before about Preacher was the cover of this novel. 100% the same for me. Right. So that, and I always assumed, like, just whenever I'd seen it, and was like, maybe I'll read it someday, it was, I always assumed that he was going to be a bad guy. Oh, okay. I, see, the main, I, see I thought it was going to be that the main character was a bad guy, and for, like, for some reason, like, he's the messed up preacher who is killing people i don't know why i, I mean that. to be fair he, he while he is like the hero of the story he is a messed up preacher who yeah has... i wouldn't say he's like cut and dry good like no they're upstanding. not standing i mean no he he is though that's very much because he's so we i mean could, yeah he he has the word of god um and when he says if, if he says things in a certain way people have to do them and he does tell someone to go and fuck themselves. No, but then he also says he didn't know that was going to happen. True. Because because his whole but thing is still. That when you no, but see this is the thing, right? He is a good guy and when you whenever you have one of his things, it's not that he's he's a good guy in that he has a set of morals and a set of rules. Yeah. And he follows them, right? Yeah, but he's not like a wholesome preacher. Like he'll swear, for example. Yeah, but that's not necessarily that like a bad guy like you can be a good guy and swear. Yeah, I, that, that's it. I, get I say he's, he's not, good, but there's shades of grey to it. Yeah, he's not a good preacher. See, I don't <laughs> no. think there are. I think he's a good guy, and I think the whole point of him is that he is a good guy. Mm, I think we'll have because to... There's no, he, because his whole storyline yeah. is, like, his dad telling him... Yeah. You, there are, there are, there's literally the quote in one of the front... Because so every issue you have, at the beginning, there's a quote that's taken from the upcoming issue. Yeah, which I really and the like issue that, that deals with Yeah, that's really good. And the issue that deals with him and his dad... Uh, the quote is, you have to be a good guy, there's already too many bad guys, or something along those lines. Yeah. It's a, a cool quote. Like I said, but then, he is the hero, I just wouldn't say... No, but he's say, also a good guy. I don't I think, agree. there are no bits where he does something deliberately bad. Like, the bit where he tells someone to go fuck himself, they then have a scene later on where he's like, saying, oh, I'm going to say something, and Tulip is like, remember what happened when you told that guy to go fuck himself? And he says, I honestly didn't think he'd take it that literally. Okay. So I think, I think, I don't think... There's, I don't think he's ever going to do anything evil. I mean, I, I sort of get what you mean about Shades of Grey, but like, yeah, he he's does not, kill he's not, people. He's, he's not like who, Batman. He's with not a... killed anyone. He's not killed anyone randomly. No, he, he's killed people that deserves it, but he's still a murderer. Yeah, I don't know, man. I, I disagree with you. I was, I, 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 I would very... say like he's a hero. I, I think the other two are the Shades of Grey oh, people. Definitely more. So. Like, here's the thing, right? I wouldn't say you know he's a villain. He's definitely a hero. And he's definitely the closest thing to a good guy we have, but he's not like a knight in shining armor kind of good guy, like completely upstanding. Yeah, yeah. That's all I'm trying to say. Like, there's definitely okay. elements to him that aren't 100 percent pure. All right, fair enough. Um, so that's the main character, Jesse Custer. Which fun fact 
is an anagram for Secret Jesus. Yep. Um, and you told me that right before we recorded, and yep. I was shocked and amazed. Yep. Um, so his storyline is basically he's looking for God because he wants to ask him something. It's he wants to find his faith again. Yeah. No, because but all like, this bad shit's happening to him. Yeah, but I mean, when, when you say that, right... That sounds like a lot more metaphorical. He is literally looking for a god who has abandoned his post. Yeah, yeah. But no, but at the be- he doesn't know that God's abandoned the world no. at the beginning. But I, I think he, he definitely is looking to speak to him. He's not kind of no, just no, no, looking no, for I his know, faith. No, I'm not, I'm not saying it's not literal either. I mean, yeah. it is literally literal. We also see God in this graphic novel <laughs> yes. as a physical character who is... But yeah, that's his kind of story, right? He's looking for God to speak yeah. to him. Then we've got Tulip who is an ex-girlfriend of his, they kind of stumble across each other again. Yeah, they she they all randomly... So after, like, escaping from this failed hit job, mm-hmm. she, her and Cassidy travel to Texas. Yes. Well, no, is it Texas? Yeah, I think so. So, yeah. So after she, like, escapes from this failed hit job, her and Cassidy are travelling to Texas, and they randomly... They see an explosion happen. Yeah. Which it turns out is... Jesse being possessed by Genesis, yeah. who is the child of an angel and a demon. Yeah. Uh, so they ran. They they're like, oh, what's happened over there? She decides she has to go help. I think. Yeah. And they just randomly meet Jesse, who's like, oh, did you come here to track me down? She's like, no, I didn't at all. So it's a very like random coincidence that these three characters all meet up. Yeah, I mean, also like, I think a lot of his congregation die. Everyone, it's everyone in his congregation. Yeah. Yes, so he's then got to go on the run because the cops are after. The police are looking for him because they think he did something. I don't know what they think he did. Yeah, that's kind of the. Well, I guess you know, from the cops' perspective, it is he is the sole surviving member of this thing that's happened. So he's going to have some information on what happened. Yeah, yeah. Um, So the first storyline is basically the cops are hunting him, and also this kind of, I guess, demon thing called the Saint of Killers. Well, it's not a demon, is it? So the Saint of Killers is literally a saint who the angels resurrect to hunt him down and kill him okay yeah and yeah. that's that's like the first kind of third of the book right yeah the saintly killer's storyline and the cop uh sheriff root and his son arseface yes <laughs> um i think we need to leave that there really because if you want to know more about arseface you should probably read this to find yeah out. yeah it's not an integral part of the story but it is a good read <laughs> yeah um yeah then we go on to the second story, which is probably my favourite, actually. Uh, yeah, I think the second one. Uh, I really like the third one. The third was good, but yeah, the second was my favourite. Where um, So Cassidy has a friend called Cy, who is a journalist, and yep. kind of has his fingers in many pies. And... Well, he's a journalist who specifically deals in like the occult and UFO abductions and stuff. Yeah. Um, it's his thing. And Cassidy thinks he might be able to help them in tracking down where God might be. Yep, of course. What they don't know... Is Sai is also a serial killer? Or is that, yeah. I mean, we can, we can say that. We said spoilers. Yeah, yeah. But um, yeah, I mean, the way they do it is very good in that you see a serial killing happening at the beginning. Yeah, but you don't see who does it. Nope. You then meet Sai. I think, do you know, do, did you realise? Because I had to go back and double check this. Like, the first time you meet Sai, you don't actually see him. The first time you hear him, sorry. He's, he's in a naughty shop um, picking up, uh, I think, a magazine called Anal Rampage. Yes. And then it was only later on when um, Cassidy's looking at his bookshelf that yeah, he yeah, kind yeah. of connects those dots. I I, I realised that after Cassidy read that or saw that. On the yeah, show. which I thought was, again, one of those things where it just goes to show that actual thought was put into this story. Yeah, oh, I'm sure they plotted out the entire, like, these stories yeah. way ahead of time sort of thing. Definitely. But yeah, so they, so they've escaped. They're in, te- in wherever they've gone to now. New, New York. York. Yeah. They meet Cy. Then you see the world's unluckiest detective or cop who is uh, a man who he's just a great character he is he's brilliant like literally like I thought it was going to be one of those things where that's he says he's that and then like some minorly bad stuff happens to him but no no just everything that go, could go wrong for him yep. goes wrong like he'll drop his badge in dog shit for example yes. <laughs> it goes yep. from little things to he's got his gun pulled on someone and then he slips in cum <laughs> oh, yeah his gun also just randomly jams on yep. him uh, it's brilliant, but he is partnered with the world, like New York's greatest Super detective, <laughs> who, yeah. who yeah. has a, who's harboring a secret. Yeah, it's all very like weird. Like they, uh, he, they rev- he says a lot of slurs against gay people, and is constantly saying like he'll be mumbling under his breath that he wants to kill them all. 
Yeah. And then the world's unluckiest cop, I can't remember his name, what is it? Is it John... John Tall. John Tall, or Detective Tall, will be like, what did you say? And he's like, oh, nothing, nothing, carry on. And you're like, oh, okay, well, this is a weird guy. Yeah. And, then, and there's also not really a strong friendship between the two. Like no, the super cop kind of is very dismissive of poor they John. Them, they get drinks together, don't, don't they? Sometimes I think there's a scene where they. Yeah. yeah. There's a scene where Tools, like people in the office, are just like, "Yeah, Tools sucks." Yeah, but and I mean, he, the, the super cop doesn't take Tools seriously. No, 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 not at all. No. But uh, yeah, so all of this is going down with Preacher. Preacher is experiencing New York for the first time and goes and does all the touristy stuff. Yep. Sai is also quite closely tied into the cops storyline. Yes, he's the one that's been he like is helping them find He's misleading. He's dropping them. hints or something. Yeah, he's like giving them hints about who this or like he's in some way helping the case or saying he's helping the case. Yeah, he's what he's basically doing is misleading them and trying yes. to frame someone else. Yes. And that also leads to an amazing story like there's an amazing moment and I don't want to go into it because I want people to experience it, but where one of our characters that we really like, they, they, they're real like back against the wall and you're like, how the fuck are they going to get out of this? And the way they do is just fantastic. But yeah, can we, yeah, I want to... So one of the best parts about this storyline is I have a fascination, I guess, with the way serial killers and killers are portrayed in comic books. Okay. I find it interesting. I don't, in, in real life, it horrifies me and I'm like, these people are terrible people. But there's something about serial killers in comic books. Because I think because they're so blown up and they're like semi genius lunatics, right? But usually, the, you, yeah. You I mean, have a, so you find out that this serial killer, like when he's ta- when Sai's talking about what he's done, yeah, he says he accidentally run a guy ran a guy over uh, and got away with it, like no one was around, and he killed the guy by accident, yeah. Uh, and then he decided that if he can get away with it once, why wouldn't he do it again? Yeah. And he just slowly gets worse and worse. He says that he like he gets off on the thrill of knowing that he's not going to get caught. Cool. Yeah, so he just steadily increases what he's doing yeah. to the point where the killing that we see in this not in this section of the graphic novel, which this one kill goes on for the entire part of this story arc. Is this the one where he cuts off someone's face? Yeah, because that's the guy you see at the beginning yeah. who he's going to kill and is yeah. begging to be killed. Yeah. He lasts the entire story arc. Yes. Uh, and Sai cuts off his face, then nails it back onto his head upside down yeah. and leaves the guy alive. Yeah. Which is horrifying. It really is. I mean, this is a pretty dark story in places. Oh, yeah. 100%. It is, it is not a comic for kids. No. Also, it's one of those comics that every time like I go into a comic book shop or somewhere, like, regardless where, it's one of those things that's always recommended to me. Don't know why. It's because you're always asking for like gory comics, because you're always looking for a, a crust, a similar to the crust. Yeah. This doesn't this reach those levels, scenes. but this no, is no. still But it has gory good. scenes. Yeah. Um, that was definitely my favourite storyline, though. That's also the storyline where we lose Cassidy. Unfortunately, yes. Um, At the end, he goes off on his merry way. It makes sense, because the third storyline is all about going into the past of Tulip and uh, Jesse and kind of figuring out their history um, on an individual level and then their history together. It's also... The weird thing about the end of that second arc is you get a... The last page or two pages are a what-did-they-do-next thing. So you get two pages and it's like... Cassidy went on to and it was I don't know it was like yeah it was like the end of a film where they're like after this Timmy went and married Lucy but like yeah 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 it's um it happens right in the middle and it's so I was like what is going on (laughs) yeah yeah okay because you 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 find out what happened to Detective John Tool you find out what happened to his partner Paul Bridges (laughs) then it yeah Cassidy went west but not before stopping for a snack in his favourite Brooklyn neighbourhood yep of the Reverend Jesse Custer and Miss Tulip O'Hare there has so far been no news. Yeah, which I thought was really weird because I was like, "Wait, what's going to happen? What am I about yeah. to?" And, it says, and then, so, and then you literally like turn the page and you're like, "It says, says Jesse and Tulip." <laughs> it says there are ten million stories in the Naked City. So yeah, it, it it does feel like at that it's because, point it's because they were ending that story arc, but it is very weird when it's in the middle of a. Book yeah, that you're like, they also don't do it with the first story arc. No, exactly. Yeah. Um, it, it it kind of feels like they weren't sure if they were going to get to continue this or not. Yeah, it would be interesting. I didn't look it up, but it would be interesting to see like when that happened. I assume there was like a break after that or something. Possibly, I honestly don't know. Um, I remember like in the in the little there's an introduction written by Garth Ennis. Yeah, and he was saying their goal was just to get to issue number sixty six, I believe. Yes. So. I, I I haven't looked ahead, so I don't know if they got to that and then it was like done, or they got to that and they carried on. Um, 
I have no idea. All I know is what I've seen in the comic book store is there's six volumes of this. Uh, yeah, that nearly works. So they must got must have got to sixty six. Yeah, they probably got to if 66, there were t- if, if there were twelve issues in. In each. volume one. Yeah, but if, if it was 12 in each, it would go beyond 66. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. So I assume they, there are some that don't have 12. Yeah, maybe 10 or, or some issues. Yeah. Um, would be my guess. Yeah. So the third storyline. Which was, my, I think, my favourite. Yeah, so that was... I guess, yeah, like we said, it was, it was all about the, the, the past. We looked at the past. Um, you, learn, you learn about where Jesse came from. Which is a pretty harsh story. Yeah, it's real brutal. There's, there's one kind of punishment that he gets the coffin yeah like he's submerged in a swamp in a coffin and is just basically fed air and he's left there for a week uh, uh the first time it's a week three is it a week? no it's three days isn't it the first time i thought it was a week the, fir- the first time no see i know this because the first time i think it's four days and i know that because i thought well that's okay he wouldn't have starved to death okay or dehydrated to death possibly but then the next time it happens, it's a week. And I was like, well, that's strange. Because I'm sure they didn't mention how they fed him or gave him water. Yeah, they don't, they, they don't mention They don't mention it at all. And then the last time it happens to him, it's a month. So yeah. I was like, they are not explaining to me how he is surviving for so long in a coffin. No. It was, uh, but yeah, no, it's, it's like a horrible punishment. But yeah, so you find out that he comes from a family that his, they're like a weird cult. Yeah. And all the men in their family are preachers. Except when there's war, and when there's war, they go and be soldiers. Yeah. Uh, the the women in the family are breeders who their only job is to continue the genetic line. The first one was a week. Was it? Yeah. It I says it was four days. It says like it says um, between the stink of my shit and puke and piss and the noise from what was calling around outside, my week in the coffin kind of suck. That was the first time. Oh, fair enough. Coffin. Maybe it was. And then is it two weeks next time? Maybe, and then a month. Check because I'm not sure now. He's been put in the coffin for a week, two weeks, and a month. Liam has found out by going back and checking the comic in the middle of the podcast like an asshole. You can put that bit in, Liam. Thanks. <laughs> but yeah, so we're finding out that his family. See, you do it in the middle of my points as well. At least I wait for you to finish. I just don't want you to carry on You're being a dick, wrong, Liam. <laughs> well, we didn't want you to be wrong, did we? I don't care if I'm wrong. Have you not learnt this yet? Well, maybe if you did, you wouldn't be so wrong all the time. So the women in the family are breeders, <laughs> yeah. and their job is to continue the genetic line and create the next generation of what's their last name? Uh, La Angels. Yeah. Or La Angels or something. La Angels. Yeah. So it's clearly the Angels. But yeah, uh, his grandma is like the head of the cult, effectively. Yeah. And she has two men with her who aren't family, but they are like members of the cult who just basically do her bidding and yeah. beat the shit out of Jesse and she's this like online. real old haggard looking bint that should have died like a decade ago yeah she's like super old in the, in the novel yeah but like, she's super old when he's a kid and yeah. this probably takes place like another 20 years past that uh, he's 20 something in the novels I think oh, okay so then no, another 10 years later I think that is anyway I think he is I don't know why I'm getting that, that wrong so I could be wrong as well yeah but yeah uh, so you find out that his dad was shot in front of him when he was a kid by the two henchmen. Yeah, uh, TC and Jody. Jody. And it's like, and then he, you know, I think at that point he tries to fight them. Is that when they put him in the coffin the first time? Sure. Possibly. <laughs> Why were you asking me details? Why? Because you're the one that likes to fucking correct me when I'm wrong. <laughs> Don't worry about it, just keep going. Fuck you. <laughs> uh, and then, yeah, so... Like, we then find out that he... So his childhood's, like, pretty horrible. They're trying to get him to... His grandma tries to teach him that God is the only person that loves him. Or no, she's trying to teach him that God loves him. He decides, well, clearly my gran doesn't love me. Oh, no, I'm saying it wrong, aren't I? Because his mum dies first. Yeah. No, his dad dies, oh, then his mum no, dies. his dad dies, then his mum dies, then all the God stuff happens. Yeah. All right, all right, let me try that bit again. So after his dad dies, his mum tries to get him to escape. I don't remember, Liam. What happens? Right. So, when he's a kid, um, his dad gets shot. I've said that bit. Yeah. Then, a few years later, his mum tries to escape, and she gets killed. And then, a little bit later, his best friend also gets killed. See, at least I, like, tr- I like, tried to tell it a little bit. You're just like, so his dad dies, his mum dies, his best friend dies. Well, that is the gist of it, right? Yeah, but what's the, the, what are you doing? It's not interesting. Ah, I disagree. What are you just saying? These people died. Yeah, it's not interesting. How would you say that interestingly? 
I feel like what you did was listen to what I said. Then when I was unsure if I was right, you just repeated what I said. <laughs> I'm going to be honest. Just, you said it's shit. I, I tuned out and wasn't even listening to what oh, you fuck said. Fuck you. So, I'm oh, going to make this close. editing real hard for you then because I'm going to tell it again. All right. So after his dad dies, his mum, a few years later, tries to escape with him. They're caught and they kill his mum in front of him. Well, they don't kill her in front of him. They She gets taken away, I think is what happens. Yeah. And then, uh, so at that point... He tries to rebel a bit, but then, like, you know, it's a grown man. It's two grown men and an old lady. And they pretty much are like, no, you're going to live with us and do what we say. Uh, his grandma then, that's when he he eventually becomes a preacher because his grandma tells him that God loves him. And he decides, well, no one out, there's no, my parents are dead. I'm, God is the only, I don't even know if this is the right order. Well, no, it is right. But what we find out later is there is one other person who yeah, because, is see, helping is, right? him. But I don't want to say anything more than that because that gives away too much, I feel. Anyway, basically, he escapes from the farm. He meets Tulip. They fall in love. And then, eventually, Jody and TC hunt him down and bring him back. Yeah. And then that, that kind of picks up... That kind of leaves off where the comic picks up at the start. Yeah, yeah. With him kind of preaching in this small town. Yes. Um... And Tulip, you know, she doesn't know why she just he thinks left he ab- her. Yeah, she thinks he abandoned her. And yeah. she's like, at, at this point, they're tied to chairs. Yeah. And now, the grandma's like, I'm going to kill Tulip. Yeah, she finds out the hard way how bad these people are. Yep. Now, there's a, there's a big, big thing that happens where Tulip gets shot in the face. Yes. You literally see the back of her head come out. Exploded off, yeah. I, personally, was shocked by that. Yep. And then very quickly disappointed that they kind of retconned it. I wasn't... Dis- I don't, see, I don't... No, because I don't look at it as a retcon. Like you said, this book feels so well planned. Oh, yeah. Like I, I think that was always going to be the case. Yeah, it just... It doesn't feel like a retcon to me. It doesn't feel like they were like, oh, shit, we've made a mistake. I guess. I, I'm sure, like, you know, there's there's a pretty obvious reason why, they, why she's brought back the way she is, because she's the one that actually gets to see God and speak with him. Yeah, yeah. So it's God that brings her back. Yeah. And then but, says, you have to tell Jesse... To mm. stop looking for me. Yeah, but I have to admit, personally, because it was so shocking and I, I was so kind of impressed by their balls to do that. And I, I, again, I was also like, fuck, where are they going to go from here? I get why they did it. It makes complete sense. It was just a little bit. There was a little tinge of disappointment in it for me. Ah, uh, fair enough. I, I don't, I, yeah, I don't agree on that one. Mm. That's just me. Yeah. Um, also, throughout it, he's talking to John Wayne. Done. <laughs> That's all <what> funny. <laughs> all right, so... You preferred the third story that went into his, his history. Mm-hmm. And that that is all very much resolved by the end of the book. The only thing yes. that I would say that, that I'm really curious about that is unresolved is this Saint of Killers that we see in the first kind of storyline. Yeah, yeah, obviously. Because clearly the Saint of Killers is coming back. Yeah, because that, that isn't resolved at all. He, they kind of just go their separate ways. Um, he tells him to... Uh, what does he... He gives him a command right at the end. Yeah, and he has to follow it. And I can't remember what it was. Oh, it was just he has to get the people to show up, doesn't he? He had to get the angels to appear. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, and and the, the Santa Killer says, you know, I'll, this, we've got unfinished business here, basically. Yeah. So I'm really keen to see that play out further um, in future instalments. I'm I'm kind of keen to to see if they bring Cassidy back. I really hope they do because he was by far my favourite character. I think I think they 100 percent will. Yeah. Um, so you made an interesting point where you said you weren't sure if Cassidy was actually a vampire or not. No, that was just me making a deliberately over-the-top point. He's 100% a vampire. Yeah, exactly. That's, that's the impression I got. Um, I didn't yeah. think it was that ambiguous. No, it wasn't. I was no. just saying that so that you'd talk about the interesting stuff, but you aren't. So uh, we, did, we talked about it. Right, I'll talk about John Wayne when you talk about your arsehole. <laughs> what? Why? They're interesting things. Not about fucking the thing we're talking about, though. Well, anything else you want to talk about with Preacher? No! <laughs> It was really good. I really liked it. I really liked it. So it was a good recommendation. Um, I think we both agreed to to read this, didn't we? It wasn't like someone suggested it to us. Yeah. Uh, no. Yeah. We've just been told to. Both of us had heard of it and been told mm. to read it outside of the podcast. And I have to say, like, like the covers are amazing. Yeah, the art in it's really good. Yeah, the art throughout is good, but the covers particularly are amazing. They're super um, detailed. The characters and like the the, the characterization particularly is really good. Yeah, I really enjoyed this a lot more than I was actually because I was kind of almost dreading it in places because I just thought if if I don't like this, this is a real big read I've committed to. Yeah, yeah. So I was really relieved that I enjoyed it as much as I did. Yeah, no, it was it was really enjoyable. 
Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm definitely like I actually. So I on on Sunday I was dog sitting right, and uh, I was up where my mum lives. I was going to drive down to my house on Sunday, and I tweeted the comic book store because I was getting to the end of of book one, and I tweeted them saying, "Do you guys have a book to a preacher in?" Because I've nearly finished book one, and I I needed to know if I needed to kind of make a detour to the comic book shop on the way back to the house. Yeah, they came back. Oh no, sorry, uh, it's on order. It should be in on Wednesday. Then I got a tweet today. We're recording on a Tuesday, uh, saying, "Guess what's coming a day early." So uh, as soon as I got that tweet, I jumped in my car, shot round to the comic book shop, picked up book two, book three, and book four. I mean, that's a good endorsement. Yeah, I mean that's that's how good this was. It made you go and buy four other, <laughs> yeah, or three other. I would have probably bought five and six, but they were out of stock of five, <laughs> and I didn't want to just pick up six for the sake. Of yeah, it. no, fair enough. Um, so. I've asked them to let me know when five comes in, but I, I imagine you know I've got what three volumes to get through first, so it might take yeah, me a while to it'll get. It'll take there. you a little while. Yeah, but I'm really keen to carry on reading this. Yeah, cool. No, it's good. I, I, I'm going to probably get the second one. Well, I think the other thing is because it is quite a dense story and a lot happens. I feel like I need to keep reading it soon because I don't want to leave too long of a gap and forget what happened. Yeah, yeah. And like like we've like we've discussed, there's a because it's so well written. There's a lot of callbacks and stuff. I wouldn't be surprised if in like book two and three there's also callbacks to things that happened in book one. Like we were oh, saying, yeah. like Face, that storyline definitely isn't resolved. No, yeah, he's coming back. Yeah, so I'm really keen to just keep the momentum going with this. Yeah. What would you give it out of five, Liam? Out of five, I'm going to say four. I agree. I think it's a four too. Yeah, re- real good read. One of our better recommendations, I'd say. Like for, for our listeners to go out and check out if they haven't before yeah 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 go go get it go get it listeners if you haven't read it already yeah ah boy um what are we doing next time next time liam we're doing a video game now there was some controversy last time we said we were going to do a game yeah what well, when we were going to do a game and then you refused to do games and we did apps instead I didn't refuse to do games i just wanted to do something that would be kind of an a cheap way of testing the waters with that and so... then i gave you a good game and you gave me a mobile app i wouldn't say it was a good game if we remember my review of it I don't remember what you said about it. Mm. I think you're wrong, by the way. But anyway, yeah. this time we're doing a proper game. By a proper game, I mean a proper computer game. A PlayStation 4 game. We, we're a little bit late to the party, but some one of us, me, has not had internet for a little bit. Yeah. So uh, what we're playing is The Division. Now, have you played any of it yet? I have. I've already played a few missions. Okay. I've got a character. Yeah. But I'm not very far in it. I think I'm like level... Three maybe. Okay, I've done a little bit. I've got a little bit further. I'm up to level eight. But what I'm thinking is we should have new characters that just me and you do together. So we do all of the missions together. Because I've I've done no co-op so far. I mean, is game. that thing? Can we have two characters? Yeah, you can have I think four as total. Oh, but I like my character. Yeah, well, like your second one. Well, I'm just gonna make a second character that's identical to my first. <laughs> Fine, uh, I'm gonna make a different character. But yeah, um, because I, I, I've I haven't done any of the co-op yet, which is like the big kind of thing that this game tries to sell you on yeah I mean it's a m- online multiplayer game yeah so I've done everything I think you player. sort of did it wrong by refusing to multiplayer I just don't like people our listeners might have picked up on that yeah I think they've I think they've noticed so having to play with people like I've enjoyed it as a single player experience so far but I'm curious what it'll be like having to play it with you <laughs> having to play it with me yeah I have a question what class are you going to be doesn't matter cool because I'm, I'm support what does that mean? Oh, like I'm the one that puts shit. down turrets and shit. No, the one that puts down turrets and shit. Yeah, that's what my main character's been. Uh, he's been a uh, turret and the sticky grenade thing. Yes, sticky yeah. bomb. I'll point that again because the sticky bomb. That's the one I'm being. It I doesn't matter. Said. You can't both be the same. It's not a good party structure. Yeah, this isn't relevant. This isn't relevant to this podcast. Thanks for listening to Nerd on Nerd. Go on. I thought you were gonna. What are you doing? It. I can if you want. I don't mind. You said you sounded like you wanted to. Okay, uh, thanks for listening, Nerd on Nerd. Well, no, you messed it up. I'll take over. Yeah. Thanks, thanks for listening, Nerd on Nerd. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, I can do this. Right, ready? All right, go on. Thank you for listening to the Nerd on Nerd podcast with him, Jack Kempster, and me, Liam Underwood. If you'd like to get involved, you can tweet us at Nerd on Nerd or email us nerdonnerdpod at gmail.com. Yeah. He did it well, guys. Also, if you want to go, you know, give us a little review on iTunes, do it. Also. Oh. <laughs> yeah. 
Um, let us know what you thought of. <laughs> uh, something. Oh, uh, yeah, so, you know, get in contact with us, guys, and let us know what your opinions were on the new stuff we covered today. So, you know, let us know if you think that they should let you pick your character in Rust, or whether you should, you know, whether everyone should just shut up and accept it. You know, just let us know your opinions. Or talk about something that you probably actually care about, like the Suicide Squad trailer. Yeah, that was the other news thing I said, talk to us about our news section. Yeah, and then you went, I'm afraid, just talking about Rust, which I can guarantee probably 90% of our listeners haven't heard of. <laughs> My name's Liam Underwood. <laughs> I'm gonna freak out about the listeners. Bye. Bye. <laughs> <laughs>